this video, we're going to be making a tic-tac-toe game in Java, implementing a 2D array. So let's go ahead and get started. You'll notice that I have a grid here. This corresponds to the uh, row and the column of where the X's and O's can go. We have imported the Java Utility Scanner, and that is because we are going to get user input. The user is going to enter what row and what column they want to put their X or their O in. So the first thing we need are a couple 2D arrays. The first 2D array I need is one that is X spots. And what that is going to do is keep track of where the X's are. I want three rows. I want three columns because tic-tac-toe is built in a three by three grid. I'm also gonna need one for the O. So that's gonna be O spots. It's gonna be a new Boolean as well. And that's gonna be three rows and three columns. Now, one thing you wanna know uh, about this is that uh, with a 2D array, the first row is actually index zero. The first column is actually index zero. So when you're looking up the, up the left hand corner, this is row zero column zero. So the max index, even though we have three rows and three columns, the max index is two because zero is uh, included. We're also going to need a player turn. And I'm going to set that to one because when the game starts, it's going to be player one's turn. If I set it to zero, I'm going to have to write another line of code to set it uh, to one. I also need a row because the user is going to enter a row. They're also going to enter the column. And I'm going to need a Boolean value because I need my game to keep looping until uh, we've reached game over. And then I need the uh, scanner. So I'm going to use my OBJ. And that is so I can actually use uh, the scanner. All right. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to output the board here. And we don't want the user to have to choose uh, what row and what column until they see the board. Um, it's not necessary, but it does look better. So we're going to do INTI equals zero. That's because we are starting with row zero. I manipulates the row and J manipulates the uh, columns. So as long as I is less than three, because our max index is two, that loop is going to run. And then we're going to increment I. Now, right here is I'm going to have a system dot out dot print line. And what that's going to do is it's going to move when it's outputting. When it's outputting, it's going to move the cursor to the next line. And that's for this next loop, which is going to be uh, INTJ equals zero. We have a nested for loop here, so I can't use uh, I again. J is less than three because there's only two columns. And then we're going to increment J. And what we're going to do here is we're going to do system dot out dot print, not print line, because we want this to print and we want these underscores to be on the same line. Now, if I just do an underscore, all these underscores are going to run together and it's going to look very uh, congested. So something I'm, that we can do is I'm going to put a space before the underscore, a space after the underscore, and I think that will make it look better. So um, you want to put a semicolon there. So let's save, let's compile this, let's run it, and let's see if it works. And it should output the way we want it to. And there's our three by three grid. Uh, they're not right next to one another. The next thing we can do is we can go back into our code and we can start building the loop. One of the reasons we're going to have loop running this game is because we don't know when the game is going to end. Uh, it could end at uh, any time. As soon as somebody gets uh, three X's or zeros in a row, somebody's going to win. Uh, we don't know when that's going to be. So while game over is equal to false, what we're going to do is we're going to run this code. So the first thing I'm going to do is put in a blank line that gets it away from the board. The board's going to output and we'll build that in here. But what we want to do is move what we're about to ask them below the board, just so it looks a little nicer. So the first thing I need to ask them is what row do you want? And we want, we need to get the row. So that's going to be row equals and that's going to be my obj dot next int put those parentheses there and then i'm simply going to ask the next question what column do you want and that allows me to determine where they want to put their x or their o depending on whose turn it is all right 
So we have all that now. Now, here's what we need to do is we need to decide, okay, is it going to be an X or is it going to be an O? And that's done by the player turn. So we're going to do if player turn is 1, then what we're going to do is, is we're going to update the X spots. Remember, X spots is a Boolean value and it's a 2D array. So we need to do the row. We need to do the column. So that gives me exactly what we need, and we're gonna set that to true. And the reason we're gonna set that to true is because when we go to actually update the board, we're gonna to check to see if it's true, and if it's true, we're gonna put an X. If it's not true, we're gonna put an underscore, but we also need to check uh, the O. Now, you could have an else if statement here. Because there's only one other possibility, I'm just gonna use else, so I don't have to type in another condition. And that's gonna be O spots, row, column, and that is going to be set equal to true. So that will allow me to figure out if it's going to be an X or if it's going to be an O. What we need to do now is we're going to build a, a new method to actually update uh, the board. We could do it all in this method right here, but if something goes wrong, we'll be able to isolate it much easier and figure out what the problem is. Let's go ahead and build a method to uh, update the board. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is uh, fix this word uh, column because we want to spell it uh, correctly. And what we're going to do is, is we're going to create a method to actually update the board. So we want to be outside of our main method. And what we're going to do is we're going to do public static void because it's not going to return anything. And we're going to call it update board. Now there's a couple of parameters that we need to pass. The first one is xbots. Uh, that is a, a 2D Boolean value. Now I'm going to call it P1 spots. I'm also going to need one for the O spots. And I'm going to call that P2 spots. All right, there we go. Uh, when we create this uh, method, what I want to do is when we call it is I want to clear out the uh, console. I want it to look uh, nice and clean so there's only one board that users can see. So I'm going to do that with a uh, slash lowercase u, three zeros, and a C, and that code will clear the console in BlueJ. All right, now we can start uh, traversing the row and the column. So to traverse the rows, I'm going to use I. And I'm going to do i is less than 3, because remember, the max index is 2 for our rows. And I need to traverse this entire uh, 2D array is what I need to do. I need to check each row and each column, because I'm looking where x is true, and I'm looking for where uh, the o is true. I need to look for all that. So let's do our inner for loop so we can get the column. It's a 3 by 3 grid, so j is less than 3 as well. And this is where the meat of my code is going to go to either write an X or an O. So if the first thing I need to check is P1 spots, I need to check the row, which is represented by I. I need to check the column, which is represented by J. If that is set to true, then what I need to do is, is I need to do system.out.print. What I need to print is I need to print an X. And when I print an X, um, That'll be for where the user selected an X. I don't know what else uh, it would be. Else if uh, P2 spots, now uh, they could have a spot that is also true. And then instead of printing an X, what I'm going to do is I'm going to print an O. Now you may be saying, well, I can just use a uh, system or just use uh, else. Uh, system dot print o, but that's not true because there's one more possibility. There aren't just two possibilities here. There's actually uh, three possibilities. So the third possibility, let's see here. Oh, I put ps2, p2 spots. The third possibility is that it's not true. It's not true at all. So let's see here. I think I got these brackets off. Let's see here. Else, mm, oh. That's not in the for loop. So definitely need to put that in the for loop. Oh, there's the ending bracket for that. Okay, so else, let's try this again. There we go, system.out.print. And instead of printing an X or an O, I'm simply gonna print uh, an underscore there. So that looks good. I think that will uh, work. I'm pretty sure that's gonna work. Now let's go back to our main method. And back in our main method, that's when we're actually gonna call update board and I need to pass down the X spots to the array and the O spots 
uh, to the array. And once we pass that down, um, it will update the board. Now let's just go ahead and kind of put here in comments, we also need to check for a win, and we also need to switch uh, the player turn. I think that's all we have left uh, to do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna compile our code, we're gonna run it, and we're gonna see if we can put in an X, and if we can put in an O. So let's go ahead and run this. What row do you want? So let's do row zero, column zero. That is in the upper left hand corner. We should see an X. And we do, and we only see one board. Let's go ahead and put an O next to it. Row zero, column one. Okay, so, uh, oh, I know why it's not doing an O. That's because it's we haven't switched the player's turn. So we're actually going to uh, need uh, to do that. So. Um, the update board is working, it's just, we just got to switch the player's uh, turn. So um, we'll need the code, let's go ahead and switch the player's turn, and then we'll check for a win. We want to make sure those X's and O's are going on the board. There's no point in checking for a win if it's not working uh, properly. So to switch the player's turn, we're simply going to do this. If player turn is set to 1, then what we want to do is we want player turn to become 2. That's all we want to do. Now, there's one other possibility, and that is if it's player two's turn. Well, if it's player uh, player two's turn, then we want player turn to simply become uh, one. All right, so now let's save it. Let's compile it. Let's run it again, and let's see if we can get an X and an O. We should be getting an X and an O. This time, we're going to use zero, zero, and then we're going to do row zero, column one, all right, and we're getting a no. Let's tr check the middle, get an X in the middle, we do. Let's see if we can get an O in the bottom right to block that X. So that's gonna be row two, column two, and we do. Okay, so that is, that is working, but what we need to do now is we need to check to see if player one or player two won, and we're gonna do that right here, and we're gonna do that by building another method. We don't have to put this check win in a different method. It's good to do so because there's gonna be a lot of code going on here and methods are a great way to actually organize your code. So we're gonna do public, static, and this time we're gonna do Boolean because we're gonna be returning a Boolean value. We need to update that game over a variable to true if somebody did win, but we need to check the win. So we're gonna have a 2D array Boolean uh, value. We're gonna use P1 spots again and we're gonna use another 2D array, and you guessed it, that's gonna be P2 spots. Now you'll notice a red line, that's because we haven't returned anything here, and the first thing we wanna do is we wanna check across uh, the top. Now when I say check across the top, I'm talking about horizontally, so let's figure out if there are three X's or three O's. Here's how we do that, if P1 spots, if the row is zero, and the column is zero. That is the upper left-hand corner. If that is true, and the middle is also true, that is row zero, column one. If that is set to true, and we have P1 spots, we need, we need the row, which is row zero, and then that is column two. If that is also true, then what we need to do is we're simply going to uh, return true. I have an extra bracket in there, I need to get rid of that. There we go, and we're gonna return true. That will take care of three X's across the top, but it can't just all be three X's, there also can be three O's. So I'm gonna do else if, and then I'm gonna check for the O's. It's gonna be the same uh, coordinates, P2 spots, so that's gonna be zero, zero. If that equals true, and you wanna spell true correctly, and P2 spots, and that is row zero, column one. If that is true, and we're gonna check the last one, P2 spots, and that is uh, row zero, column two. If that is set to true, then what we're going to do is we are going to return true. What we need to do is down here in this method, we need to code uh, for every single, there we are, every single possibility. So let's go ahead and fast forward so we can see that done. All right, so finally, 
our check win uh, method has been uh, coded. So we did a check across the top for both X's and O's. We did a check across the middle for X's and O's and uh, going across the middle horizontally, that's gonna be row one, which is actually the second row, column zero. Checking the middle spot, which is row one, column one, and then checking the far right middle, which is row one, column uh, two. We did a check across the bottom row, that's gonna be in row two, column zero one and two for both X's and O's. We did across the left side, which is going down, this is actually going down uh, vertical on the left hand side. So that's gonna be a row, or excuse me, column zero, and then changing uh, the rows for both X's and O's. Down the middle, down the right side, so just update that comment there, checking the right side, we checked diagonal one, and we check diagonal two. Now, uh, something you may have had was this right here. You may have had an error, and that's because the computer has no idea whether or not these if or else if statements are going to run. And because it is returning a value, a Boolean value, we must return something. So that is all of our check win sub. We're checking all the possibilities for a user to win. So right up here, what we're gonna do is, is we need to call it. Now when we're calling this, we need to assign it, because it is a uh, Boolean value, we need to assign it back to our game over um, Boolean value that we had earlier. So game uh, over equals check win, and what we're gonna pass down is X spots and O spots again. So we're gonna do that and that should uh, do it. Um, now, what we need to do is that's gonna return a true or false value. So what we need to do is if it's true, we shouldn't switch the player's turn. Uh, we should end the game. So what we're gonna do is we're simply gonna do this. If game over equals true, then what we need to do is we need to exit that loop early. We don't need to stay inside the loop. Now, right outside this loop, I'm gonna let player one or player two know they won. So I'm gonna do system dot out dot print line. And what I'm gonna say is, um, actually I wanna skip a space. That's why I wanna do that. And then we we're gonna need an if statement. If player turn is one, then I know, then I know we have exited the loop because here's my loop bracket right here. If I hit said break, we're gonna exit the loop. And if player turn is one, then I know player one has one. So I'm gonna let player know, player one know they won. And then there's one other possibility and that it's not player turns one. So I'm gonna do else. I'm gonna put my semicolon of course. And then what we're gonna do is we're simply gonna output that player two has one. And then we're gonna test this and see if it works. Player two, one. All right, so I think we're ready to go. We're gonna compile and we're gonna run our code. All right, let's go ahead and check for a win. Let's check those uh, diagonals because if any coordinates are wrong, it's most likely gonna be uh, the diagonals. So we're gonna, we're gonna go diagonally uh, down here, down towards uh, the right. So that's what we're gonna check for. So uh, let's put an O on the far right hand side right here. That is row one, column two. Uh, let's go ahead and put that X in the middle. That's row one, column one. Uh, let's put that Z, uh, next O right here on the top. That is row zero, column two. Let's put that X at the bottom right, which is row two, column two, and it should say player one, one. And it does. So that's how you make tic-tac-toe in Java. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to help the channel grow. We'll see you guys in the next video.